Dejection, an ode. Late, late yesterday, I saw the new moon with the old moon in her arms. And I fear, I fear, my master dear, we shall have a deadly storm. Well, if the bard was weather-wise, who made the grand old ballad of Sir Patrick Spence, this night, so tranquil now, will not go hence unroused by winds that ply a busier trade than those which mould yon cloud in lazy flakes, or the dull sobbing draught that moans and rakes upon the strings of this Aeolian lute, which better far will mute. For lo, the new moon, winter bright, and overspread with phantom light, with swimming phantom light overspread, but rimmed and circled by a silver thread. I see the old moon in her lap foretelling the coming on of rain and squally blast. And oh, that even now the gust were swelling, and the slant night shower driving loud and fast. Those sounds which oft have raised me whilst they awed and sent my soul abroad might now perhaps their wonted impulse give, might startle this dull pain and make it move and live. A grief without a pang, void, dark and drear. A stifled, drowsy, unimpassioned grief, which finds no natural outlet, no relief in word or sigh or tear. O oh lady, in this wan and heartless mood, to other thoughts by yonder throstle wooed, all this long eve, so balmy and serene, have I been gazing on the western sky and its peculiar tint of yellow-green. And still I gaze, and with how blank an eye, and those thin clouds above in flakes and bars that give away their motion to the stars, those stars that glide behind them or between, now sparkling, now bedimmed, but always seen, yon crescent moon as fixed, as if it grew in its own cloudless, starless lake of blue. I see them all so excellently fair. I see, not feel, how beautiful they are. My genial spirits fail, and what can these avail to lift the smothering weight from off my breast? It were a vain endeavour, though I should gaze for ever, on that green light that lingers in the west. I may not hope from outward forms to win the passion and the life whose fountains are within. O oh lady, we receive but what we give, and in our life alone does nature live. Ours is her wedding garment, ours her shroud, and would we aught behold of higher worth than that inanimate, cold world allowed to the poor, loveless, ever anxious crowd? Ah, from the soul itself must issue forth a light, a glory, a fair luminous cloud enveloping the earth. And from the soul itself must there be sent a sweet and potent voice of its own birth, of all sweet sounds, the life and element. O pure of heart, thou needst not ask of me what this strong music in the soul may be, what and wherein it doth exist, this light, this glory, this fair luminous mist, this beautiful and beauty-making power. Joy, virtuous lady, joy that never was given save to the pure and in their purest hour. Life and life's effluence, cloud at once and shower, Joy, lady, is the spirit and the power which wedding nature to us gives in dower. A new earth, a new heaven, undreamt of by the sensual and the proud. Joy is the sweet voice, 
joy the luminous cloud, we in ourselves rejoice. And thence flows all that charms, or ear, or sight, or melodies the echoes of that voice, or colours a suffusion from that light. There was a time when, though my path was rough, this joy within me dallied with distress, and all misfortunes were but as the stuff whence fancy made me dreams of happiness. For hope grew round me like the twining vine, and fruits and foliage, not my own, seemed mine. But now afflictions bow me down to earth, nor care I that they rob me of my mirth, but, oh, each visitation suspends what nature gave me at my birth, my shaping spirit of imagination. For not to think of what I needs must feel, but to be still and patient all I can, and haply by abstruse research to steal from my own nature all the natural man. This was my sole resource, my only plan, till that which suits a part infects the whole, and now is almost grown the habit of my soul. Hence, viper thoughts that coil around my mind, reality's dark dream, I turn from you and listen to the wind, which long has raved unnoticed. What a scream of agony by torture lengthened out, that lute sent forth. Thou wind, that ravest without, bare crack, or mountain tarn, or blasted tree, or pine grove with a woodman never clomb, or lonely house long held the witch's home, methinks were fitter instruments for thee, mad lutinist, who in this month of showers, of dark brown gardens, and of peeping flowers, makes devil's yule with worse than wintry song, the blossoms, buds, and timorous leaves among. Thou actor, perfect in all tragic sounds, thou mighty poet even to frenzy bold, what tellst thou now about? Tis of the rushing of a host in rout, with groans and trampled men, with smarting wounds. At once they groan with pain and shudder with the cold, but hush, there is a pause of deepest silence, and all that noise, as of a rushing crowd, with groans and tremulous shudderings, all is over. It tells another tale, with sounds less deep and loud, a tale of lesser fright, and tempered with delight, as Otway's self had framed the tender lay. Tis of a little child, upon a lonesome wild, not far from home, but she hath lost her way, and now moans low in bitter grief and fear, and now screams loud in hopes to make her mother hear. Tis midnight, but small thoughts have I of sleep, for seldom may my friend such vigils keep. Visit her, gentle sleep, with wings of healing, and may this storm be but a mountain birth. May all the stars hang bright above her dwelling, silent as though they watched the sleeping earth. With light heart may she rise, gay fancy cheerful eyes, joy lift her spirit, joy attune her voice. To her may all things live from pole to pole, their life the eddying of her living soul. Of simple spirit guided from above, dear lady, friend devoutest of my choice, thus mayest thou ever, evermore rejoice. <laughs>